got me into this mess. Breaking them? That's what's going to get me out. My name is Clyde Wilcox. My entire life I've always followed the rules. I've always done what was right. Hey, uh, didn't you kids see that sign? It says, stay off the grass. My brother told me, people who dress like you are homos. Oh yeah? But one of these days when you grow up and your parents are sick of following you around and wiping your little asses, you're gonna have to get jobs. And then you're gonna have to dress like homos too. Wilcox, Ted screwed up on the Anderson reports. I need you to stay late and do these right. They have to go out first thing in the morning and I can trust that you won't screw them up. So my entire life I do things right. I follow the rules and I work hard. And this is what I get in return. More copies of more documents of things I don't even care about. Things that have to do with deals and money. Things that for the most of us in the real world don't matter. So this is my life. Every day, every night. The same old thing. The same old routine. I was one of the poor saps that would be in the office smothering under the choke of that fluorescent light. For eight or nine hours every day, I would organize, copy, bind, staple, rebind, and recopy documents. But that doesn't matter. What matters is that one night after another day at that job, I came home and something happened. Who is it? Hello? I suspiciously got the package into my apartment, and I didn't open it for a while. I sat it on my table, and in my head went through all of the scenarios of what could be inside. Could it be a bomb? 
Who would send me a bomb? I don't even know anyone who ever remembered me long enough to hate me or to want to send a bomb. You really have to love or hate someone to send them a bomb. Could it be an old fruitcake? Some kind of relic from a Christmas long ago? I spent some time wondering if it could be smallpox or maybe anthrax. Everybody is always worrying that someone is going to send them some disease that they don't want. Well, why not me? Someone could have sent me a disease. I ruled that possibility out, so I opened the box. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. <laughs> You'll probably find this unimaginable at first. I'm sure you're going to find it rather hard to believe. But please, bear with me. We have your best interests at heart. Right now, you're probably asking yourself, who is we? How does this man on my computer know who I am? Why did they send this to me? Well, the answer is simple, Mr. Wilcox. We want to offer you a job. You've led a model life. You've been the best citizen you could possibly be. A veritable army of one. <laughs> and that's why we're contacting you. That's why we've chosen you to be rewarded and work for us. And now you're probably asking yourself, how does this man know so much about me? Well, that's simple, Mr. Wilcox. We've been watching you. That's what we do. That's what we've always done. We watch over everyone. And now that's what we would like you to do for us. So that was the beginning of the end of Clyde Wilcox. At the time, I was very confused. What did they mean they were watching me? And how did they know who I was? Why, how, when, where? Did I mention why? My name is Mr. Williams. I'm responsible for an agency called The Network. You've never heard of The Network. But there's a reason for that. No one is ever supposed to know of The Network. That's how it works. We represent a vast network of the highest technology developed in our glorious government. The reason The Network exists is simple. To watch over and prevent anti-government activity. We are The Network are the eyes and ears of the nation. We are the silent shepherds, always keeping a watchful eye on our beloved herd. It's an honor for you to even be made aware of the network. It is even more of an honor to be asked to join the network, to be made one of our agents, whose sole purpose is to be that watchful eye. We are extending that offer to you, Mr. Wilcox. Without even knowing it, you have passed the ultimate test. If you choose to be an agent of our network, you will never have to report to a normal job again. Housing, food, income, vacations, transportation, it will all be awarded to you. You may never discuss what you see, what you do, or what the network is to anyone. It is vital to our organization that you never discuss the network. If you choose to work for us, then place the second disk into your computer. They will install the proper software to combine your computer into our system. They will be part of the network. After that, you and your computer will work with us to make a better America. Thank you for your time, Mr. Wilcox. I sat there staring at the computer screen for what seemed like hours. It had to be someone's idea of a cruel joke. Maybe they made all of this up. But what if they weren't making this up? What if it wasn't a joke? I deserve something like this. At least that's what I thought at the time. So I stuck the second disc into my computer. 
it began to spin, it dialed up something through the modem, and then the computer screen went black. It was black for two days, until another package showed up at my doorstep. Hello again, Mr. Wilcox. I can't tell you how pleased we are that you've decided to join us. It may take you a short time to get the hang of navigating the software running the network. If you have any questions, you can email to the link provided. As promised, your living expenses will be fully compensated. Check with your bank in the morning and you will discover that we have made an electronic deposit into your account. Keep up the good work, and every two months, we will continue to make a substantial deposit. And don't worry, we give yearly raises and bonuses for jobs well done. The next day, I found a large deposit of money in my account. From that point on, every two months, there was just more money in my account. After that first deposit, without haste, I went into my horrible job and quit. It was a great feeling. I was being taken care of now. I did the right thing all of my life, and I was finally being rewarded for it. My job was simple. With the voice command and microphone they sent me, I could give the command for different camera locations anywhere in the country. Anywhere. I don't just mean busy traffic intersections or bank lobbies. The network was larger than I could have imagined. They had some type of fiber optic micro cameras everywhere. Streets, houses, hotels, libraries, apartments, bathrooms, bedrooms, shopping malls, bars, farms, parking garages, airports, backyards, front yards, grade schools, high schools, colleges, day camps, summer camps, nightclubs, government facilities, mansions, consulates, embassies. You name it, and the network had a grid of cameras that was watching it inside and out. There were no rules for me to follow except for two. Watch for any government activity, and never communicate with anyone about the existence of the network. I could bounce around looking at whatever, whoever, or wherever I wanted. If I found something suspicious, I would mark it by hitting a certain key and it would be flagged. I guess at that point, it would be passed through the network to some kind of superior or upper management, and they would assess if it was potentially dangerous to the security of the country or government. It was very hard to adjust to the idea of watching people, watching them live, watching them do whatever, watching them eat, sleep, drink, screw, shit, work, you name it. I was watching them. It was very distracting at first. I went through four phases. The first, I call my pervert phase. This, of course, is the most obvious phase. All of the sudden, I had access to any act of lovemaking, lust, or debauchery the network cameras could catch. It was like having a free subscription to a porno channel. I saw everything. Everything. Every size, every shape. Number of participants, sexual preference, tricks, toys, boys, girls, goats, even an attempt at someone's pet. What I'm saying is that my pervert phase didn't last very long. After a while, all the subjects you're watching just become that, subjects. It's like watching animals, or watching naked meat bouncing around. Now I'm sure other people who have done my job, you know, they never get through their pervert phase. But as for me, I did. After you watch all those different people humping each other in all those different ways, you kind of lose your taste for it. 
My next phase was my fine art phase. After the dehumanizing aftertaste from my pervert phase, I decided I should become more cultured. I spent most of my time during that phase looking at art museums, graffiti, parks, fountains, sculptures. I would boost my sound output and listen to shows or movie theaters. The most notable part of this phase is jazz music. On camera 17A, grid 39, I found an old jazz man. He was special. He had a horn and would play on the streets. It sounded incredible. Even through the crappy sound of the surveillance microphones, it sounded incredible. I envied him. He lived in a much more simple world than the one I was now part of. The longer I worked for the network, the less I was going out into the real world. My view of the world was very much through the little porthole of the surveillance system on my computer. This is what led to my third phase. I guess you could call it my stalker phase. I was very lonely and I realized that with the help of the network, I could finally meet people. I decided I needed a good woman in my life. With the network, I could find a girl, follow them via camera, find out what they were all about, find out their patterns, and then accidentally bump into them and hit it off. Oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. I was just too busy reading this book I got on Monet. It's okay. It's okay. Are you sure? I'm, I'm really sorry. Yeah, I'm fine. That's funny. Monet is actually my favorite artist. Well, next to Cezanne. Me too. How'd you know I was going to say that? Uh, I would just assume that anybody would say that. I mean, because, you know, Monet's just more accessible, so everyone, that's their favorite artist. That's what I always tell people. Is that fettuccine Alfredo? That's my favorite pasta. It's almost my favorite food. Well, next to pad thai, of course. Is this some sort of sick joke? Who are you? Did somebody set you up to this? No. Hey, don't you like movies? I really like Patrick Swayze movies. You're really creeping me out. Besides, my favorite movie is- Breakfast at Tiffany's. Me too. Get away from me. This plan didn't last too long for obvious reasons. Now I didn't move into my next phase for a while. For a couple of months, I was a model employee. I really got the hang of the equipment, the camera placement, and strategies for my surveillance. Here's the thing. Much of the time, you're looking at nothing. If you weren't watching people do nothing, then you were watching them be bad. I was constantly watching acts of disrespect, vile acts, disgusting acts, embarrassing acts, people violating rules, each other, and themselves. I began to see just how disgusting we can be as a species. This is where I first started to lose it a little. I saw beatings, theft, sexual assault, vandalism, animal abuse, wastefulness, littering, spousal abuse, child abuse, and on occasion, murder. I witnessed all of this, and none of it had anything to do with anti-government activity. You'd be surprised how fast time passes when you're stuck in a room always watching other people's lives instead of living your own. Time was passing and really starting to take a toll on me. It was still bothering me that I would see all of these terrible things happening and feel so powerless to do anything about it. After a few days of watching a particular group of young men making methamphetamines in their apartment, I got an idea. I had all of this money that the network was paying me and I never even thought to use any of it. So I bought a phone. Hi, is this the Monroeville Police Department? Yes, I would like to report a crime that's going on in your county. I want to report a crime. I want to report a crime. Yes, uh... I need to report a crime that's going on in your county. Hi, I need to report a crime. I want to report a crime. This would begin what was known as my angel phase. 
Whenever I saw something bad happening, I would do my best to get the police in that area involved. It was working great until... Can I help you? We're from the network, Mr. Wilcox. We were sent by Mr. Williams. May I have the cell phone, please? The network doesn't need guardian angels. Understand? You have a nice day. Mr. Wilcox, we are not in a position to deal with standard crimes. Your very actions jeopardize the security of the network. You must cease at once and focus on the job at hand. The stealth of the network must be protected at any price. Thank you. Camera, grid nine, camera four. Time had really started to pass. I had to assume I was doing a suitable job because I hadn't heard from anyone in the network since the cell phone incident. Money kept reappearing in my account, and I hadn't heard from anyone. Until the day I discovered the dry cleaner man. I had come across him by accident. Sometimes, when I was bored, I would just type in random camera coordinates. I found him, followed him, and flagged him. I was instructed by my unnamed contact at the network to continue watching him and hit the panic button if I should see him doing anything suspicious. His daily routine became my daily routine. When he slept, I would sleep, and when he did anything else, I would watch. One evening, while I was watching, I received an email from my network contact. I was instructed to keep a close eye on my subject for the next few hours. Camera, west angle, one. It was almost interactive. I was removed, yet I was part of it. It was real. I never found out what exactly they were up to. I never found out who the dry cleaner man was. I never found out why he had to be killed or why it was important that I pointed them out. I was never told a thing. I didn't turn on my computer for a few days after my first successful bust. All I did was wander around the city. For the first time in my life, I was angry with the system. I wasn't even aware of it myself, but I was angry on the inside. I felt like I was being kept in the dark. We all were. When I finally booted up the computer, there was a message waiting for me. Mr. Wilcox, we can tell you are having some grief issues over your last case. If there's anything we can do to make you feel better, just send a request. What could they possibly do to make me feel better? What could they possibly do to make me feel like I did the right thing? The network had the capability to give me whatever I wanted, right? I mean, they had to keep their people happy. So I asked for the one thing that I thought would make me feel free. The one thing that would take away all my cares and anxieties. I got you stuck off the realness. We be the infamous, you heard of us. Official Queensbridge murderers, the mob comes equipped for warfare. Beware of my crime family who got enough shots to share for all those who want to profile and pose. Rock you in your face, stab your brain with your nose bone. You all alone in the street. I would take rides here and there in between my shifts. 
Sometimes I'd ride during the day and sometimes at night. It helped to clear my mind. I can see it inside your face, you're in the wrong place. Cowards like you just get their whole body laced up with bullet holes and such. Speak the wrong words, man, and you will get such. You can put your whole army... For a small period of time, it was enough to keep me calm. Then I had a terrible realization. We can tell you were having some grief issues over your last case. They were watching me. That was how they knew I'd be good for their job. That's how they knew I'd be good for their damn network. I wasn't rewarded for a life of following the rules. If anything, I was just put in a prison by the truth. The truth that they were watching me. They were watching all of us. And for what? For their vision of the truth? That's when I really started to lose it. It is a horrible realization that you are being watched at all times. Wherever or whatever I was doing, they could be watching. Kind of like when I'm watching other people. So whether I was at home relaxing, or somewhere trying to be incognito, or working out my libido, they were watching. I had to keep going. I had to keep carrying on and working as normal. I couldn't let them know I wasn't happy working for the network. But inside, there was a storm gathering. I was disgusted. Sometimes it was almost paralyzing. I couldn't believe that this was the system that I'd worked so hard to be a part of. I couldn't believe that this is what it meant to be a model citizen. I no longer had faith in my country. I no longer had faith in the system or the rules or even myself. The one thing I had, the one thing I had faith in was jazz. Jazz was like the secret language that the cameras couldn't pick up. It was the only thing they couldn't take from me. I had to keep going. I had to keep working and carrying on as normal. I couldn't let them find out I wasn't happy. I was afraid if they realized I wanted out, they'd send those two thugs back to get me. Mr. Williams said himself, the stealth of the network must be protected at any price. At any price. I was beginning to realize there was only one way out of working for the network. That's about the time I met Larry. I plugged in the camera coordinates that were hidden in the pizza box, and soon I was watching Larry watch me watching him. Larry was even more paranoid than me. For two weeks, we only communicated through the notes he would send along in pizza boxes or Chinese takeout. Like myself, Larry was a watcher for the network. He was also a master computer programmer. The network had hired him for these talents. Keep your face forward, don't look at me. Just keep looking forward. Larry was terrified that the network was now following his activities via satellite. What? I did it. I created a virus. Completely shut down the network in a matter of hours. Why are you telling me this? Because I need your help. I mean, of course, the network's going to be safeguarded against this type of attack. That's why I designed a, a a program with a two-party delivery system. And, and you want me to be the other party? That's fucking nuts. <laughs> I've developed two disks. Each one contains the same virus. You know, once the first one is inserted into a network computer, it'll disrupt the flow of information and work as a decoy. Then when they're going in to clean that one up, that's when the second disk can be inserted into another network computer. Unnoticed. And within a few hours, the entire grid's a virus attacking itself. 
So the first disc to be inserted is going to be flagged by the network. That's the only way. I mean, I can't do it. I've seen what they do to people. I mean, no, that they'll suspect me anyway. I mean, they're, they're probably watching right now. I need your help on this. It sounded too good to be true. These bastards were everywhere. For all I knew, this was a test of loyalty they had devised. They could be watching us this minute. I wanted to shut down this damn network more than anyone, but I couldn't risk it. I'm sorry, I, I, I can't. I, 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 want, I want to, but I can't. What, what if I got caught? I'm sorry, Don't I... Don't look at me. Look forward. Don't look at me. We're not supposed to be having this conversation. I, I, I want to help, but I can't. I'm sorry, I, I can't do it. Uh, it's it's going to work. It's going to work. I can't. You can take this with you. Just think about it. Think about it, will you? Hurry up. Get out of here. My behavior in society had completely deteriorated. Funny to think that the job they gave me for following the rules pushed me to the point of breaking them. That poor bastard probably thought I was going to turn him in. He looked crestfallen when I left him that day. Larry's disc sat on my coffee table for two or three weeks. I can't remember exactly how long. I was starting to really lose track of time. All I know is that it sat there for a while. It sat there until I saw something on the network cameras. Something more horrible than anything I'd ever seen. Ever. Get out of there. Come on, get out of there. You can go, go. He doesn't have any money. He doesn't have any money. Go. Get out, run, run. nothing more than a standard crime. There was nothing I could do. If I had the cell phone, maybe. But there was nothing I could do. It was a standard crime. I spent the next few days in my tent. I had to plan. I now knew what I had to do. You think that you're helping? There's no truth in what you're doing. There's no truth in what you're seeing. No truth! As network cameras momentarily regain control a few hours later, images could be seen of Wilcox's body being placed into the black plastic body bag by the coroner crew. What the cameras didn't see was this. Actors who had recently been hired taking off their phony coroner outfits. A young man who looked strikingly similar to Clyde Wilcox emerging from a black plastic bag completely unharmed from anything resembling a gunshot wound. A lone figure heading south for the border on a scooter. MIC might be precisely what the niggas need for revolution. What you use on notebook paper at a blue pen? Who are you the street fighter? Ken. Are you kick? Who coming through on some new cartoon shit to do some more itchy scratchy cartoon shit? Oops upside your head with a broomstick. Maybe use a pool stick, probably a tool kit. You hear different styles when the hip hop group sit. Now you hear different styles when just talk who spit. Jurassic, epidemic mass is classic. Dead beat, bougie rap, casket caskets. How you say a hot spit in that wax shit? You couldn't fire light a fluid up with a matchstick. I'm half rap, half crappy ass bastard. Plus some rap cats. 
MC ass back with you. Tactics, plastic, explosive, pen tips, profound friendships, and short term membership. Membership's often it came with a sword in it, and a microphone with a retractable cord in it. Y'all get it? Too many lines per paper. Yeah. I'll send you to the way the industry turned trader. My favorite technique played for danger. JLC Doc Planet Asia. Yeah, yeah. Epidemic. Smash the floors up. Right forever, through hell and each type of weather. I'm cutting deep between the line beneath this knife and seven. I cheat your life and cut it short, live your life whatever. My whole team recite this sort, keep your minds a clever. Abilities, with no the missions when we spilling these rhymes, killing them seeds so quickly, even please didn't believe. The illness vision is seized, spitting disease. The shit is so complex, my flow is written in sea. First subliminal lines to ever give you a dream when you still stand in the lie but disappear from the scene. What you get from the E, the effect is irreversible, reflex is all completely non existent when the First is gold. You become subjected to the fresh scripts the earth has known. Not even this you yet, cause all these sounds is personal. I'm blessing the curse of gold, platinum is too tacky for me. All it does is attract crappy, bad, exact, and corny. Something.